Oh, oh, oh man. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Is nice hash good? Should I mind a nice hash? Why don't you like nice hash? You should use nice hash. Why aren't you using nice hash? Just use it. Oh, they paid everybody back. Just stop being so hard on them. Guys, come on. I'm so sick and tired of this. So we're going to go over this. Not for the first time, not for the second time, not for the third time. I don't know how many times it's been. Let's go with 69. No, because it ain't that good. Let's go with 666. Let's talk about nice hash. Why I don't recommend using it. Why I don't personally use it. And the whole entire history of this channel and nice hash as it stands because if there's one thing I need, it's for you guys to stop commenting about using nice hash and what my thoughts are on it. So we're gonna do it again, okay? What's nice hash? Nice hash is a mining rental service. Essentially the way it works is that if you're a miner, you put your GPUs or your ASICs on the network with their proprietary software and you rent it out to people that want to mine shit coins or alts, okay? So there you go, that's what it is. Then from the investor's standpoint, they get on nice hash and they rent your equipment using Bitcoin and they pay you in Bitcoin to use your equipment to mine shit coins, alt coins, okay? That's what they do. That's how it works. Nice hash gets a cut of it, and that's how they make their money. How do the miners make the money? Well, they're renting their services out. Are they making as much money as they would mining it directly? It depends on the coin. It depends on the day. It depends on a lot of different factors. Are the people renting the rigs or your GPUs to mine making the most money? It depends on the day. It depends on how much the, the going markets are. It's a game. It's a markets game. It has nothing to do with anything else other than the markets. Some days the miners are going to do better. Some days the renters are going to do better. End of story, okay? There's nothing really complicated about it. But no matter what, the only person that will always do the best is going to be nice hash themselves because they just take a cut off of your equipment, okay? End of story. But let's talk about why I don't like it, okay? Because a lot of people seem to have forgotten the principles of crypto. Or maybe you're new and you just don't know them. So let's, here, let's go, let's go back to the beginning. Bitcoin, white paper, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is still required to prevent double spending. We propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network. The network timestamp transactions or timestamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash based proof of work, forming a record that cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work. The longest chain not only serves as proof of the sequence of events witnessed, but proof that it came from the largest pool of, well, it says CPU power here. Oh, how times have changed. As long as a majority of CPU power is controlled by nodes that are not cooperating to attack the network, they'll generate the longest chain and outpace the attackers. The network itself requires minimal structure. Messages are broadcast on a best effort basis and nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting the longest proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. Now, if we go further and further into this, it makes it abundantly clear that it is to avoid a third party. What is NiceHash? What are exchanges? 
Why do people say they do not want them if they've been in crypto for a long time or they do not trust them at the very least? They are third parties facilitating transactions. What is nice ass? It's a third party, a trust facilitating transactions between miners and renters. If the entire point of crypto is to allow for peer to peer transactions without a third party, then that would be the basic principle for why you would not want something like NiceHash to exist. But it goes further than that. Yes, it's a service that can be utilized and it makes things easy. I get it, okay? I'm not gonna argue with you on that point. If that's what you decide you want to do, then you can go ahead and do it. But if we go all the way back five years, I said, hey, it doesn't look like a good idea. Why? Because they have a master wallet. What is a master wallet? We talked about this in yesterday's video along with a few other videos. It basically means that all the crypto is held in one wallet on the exchange and that is controlled by that third party. And then you have basically slave wallets that you don't have full control over that then essentially they are able to facilitate transactions within their ecosystem between you and the renters and themselves. Okay. But what happened? I don't know. After my first video that I said it wasn't a good idea, maybe a year later, they got hacked. And when they got hacked, it was conveniently at the top of the bull run for Bitcoin. And when they got hacked, they lost like 4,700 Bitcoins. Something like $70 million or something of not their money, of everybody's money. Now, there are conspiracy theorists that say that they did it. There are, you know, tons of stuff like that. I don't know. I can't prove anything. What I do know is they lost it all at the top of Bitcoin. And then when did they pay it back? Come on, guys. Look at this. When did they pay it back? 60%. So a majority of it was paid back in August of 2018. When Bitcoin was sitting at around $6,700. Let's do some quick math here. So if you lose forty seven hundred bitcoins at seventeen thousand dollars, it's eighty million dollars. All right. But then let's say you pay it back when it's sixty seven hundred dollars. It's thirty one million dollars. Can you all stop asking me what my problem with nice hash is now? Come on. It's all in the numbers, boys. It's all in the numbers. It's all right there in front of your face. Okay. I don't think I have to say anything else. Actually, I think I'm done. I think I'm done there. Why don't I like nice hash by principle of crypto? I don't like it because it's a third party. Does that mean I don't think you should use it? Well, yes, personally, I don't think you should. Am I going to say that nobody should use it and you're the worst person ever if you use it? No, by all means, if it's easy for you and that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. So here's my suggestion. If you're going to go ahead and use nice hash first. Okay. If you're going to use nice hash, do it through a VPN. You can check out my link for flash routers down in the description below. <laughs> Got to get that shameless plug in there because we're all about that fiat, right? Next, if you're going to be doing that, make sure you go ahead and regularly pull out your Bitcoin. Don't leave it in their little slave wallet because if they get hacked, you're going to lose it and they're not going to pay you back for at least like a year, right? I mean, if history repeats itself, okay? And that's it. Pull your Bitcoin out, put it in a different wallet, just like we talked about with everything else. Exchanges, after you're done exchanging, put it in a different wallet. Easy peasy. 
Game over. Put a bulk of whatever you have in crypto somewhere that you have control over the private keys. And you know, you'll probably avoid a lot of issues. But there were enough people that lost enough money on this that I know that not enough people think that this is a real threat. And it clearly is a real threat. This happens on exchanges, it happens on services like NiceHash, mining rig rentals, etc., so on and so forth. If you're going to be using these applications where you don't have control of the keys, you are risking losing everything if you're leaving it there. So don't leave it there, okay? As far as using NiceHash on this channel, we will not teach you how to use it. We will not take any sponsorships from them. I will not use it. Stop asking me to use it. Game over. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope that you guys have a better understanding. Sorry, there's a little bit of rage that has to come out there, but I love you all. I hope that you guys see it. I've been dealing with these questions for years, over half a decade now, okay? All right? All right, so... Forgive me if I came off a little coarse. Doesn't mean I don't love you. I'll see you next Tuesday.